been milling a log or two today. Well, actually only one. Uh, this is going to be one of the top plates. I didn't have anything long enough left in the log yard. I only had two 18-foot logs left. With the extension going past the end of the cabin, which I want at least two feet of overhang on the, on the gable ends, and so I needed something longer, and I went to the mill, and they had some long logs. They had been laying for a while, but they were still good and solid. And so I, I got two of them and brought them home. I've got one of them milled out, both sides. And I've got another one over here. I'll mill one side, and then I'll take that slab off, which was, this slab over here was the first slab that came off. And then I set my mill at about six and a quarter, my Alaskan. And then I'll, I'll make the second pass. Got my leveling blocks on. I've got three three lines here. One is the center line that I came out three and an eighth inches from the center line to get the, the established face here. Well, it will be a face here and here also. But uh, I'll do another video and show how I set these these. I call them a leveling block. Uh, this little system here. It's not my system. I didn't think this up. A friend of mine came up with this, but for now, I need to make some sawdust. This log is set up, ready to mill. I'm using a, an old part of an extension ladder. It's 12 feet long. For my, my rail, I have always used one that I'd made out of wood, but I, I've seen a lot of people use a part of an extension ladder, and I thought, well, I'm going to try that. Got the slab off of this over here to the side and I'm ready now to readjust my, my Alaskan sawmill down to six and a quarter. I'm not sure how well that's showing up. It's kind of in the shade there but that line at the bottom is six and a quarter down from the top. That's how thick I'm making this log. That gives me just a little bit of play on the on the thickness of it but I'll gas my saw up because just as I got at the other end, it ran out of gas. I don't get very good gas mileage when I'm milling with that 394, but it sure will cut. <laughs> This log is ready to turn into a top plate now. It's a little bit over 21 feet long, like 21 feet, 2 inches, something like that. I only need like 20 foot 4 total length. I'll let these plates extend out past uh, the end of the log wall about 2 feet. And give it a good overhang on the gables. I'm glad to have these milled. It's been a hot, humid day. I've got the plate finished. Well, I say finished. I still have to hew the outside. This is for seawall top plate. I ripped it flat on the top. I like to 
cut a 45 on the bottom and I come down two thirds of the width here to get this and I just use a framing square to lay this out and cut it with a chainsaw. I'll turn this over so that you can see how what this looks like on the underneath side. This is the part that is an extra inch from down from the notch layout to fit down into the keyway. This is the part right here that will fit down into the, the keyway on the B and D wall. And this area here will sit down on the on the notch. This wood that's left here will help to keep the bottom of this uh, plate log from kicking out at the bottom. And I'll, uh, I'll do a different type notch on the top side of it here. I'm, I'm not to that yet, but I think of what I'll use is what I call a haunched dovetail. I always seem to have a knot to have to deal with. But I've got this nice and clean. And after I get this log hewed, it'll be ready to set on the wall. This is the A wall top plate. It's all laid out. Got a little bit of a blue streaks in it here. This will be where I rip the top flat here. I'll do the same thing here that I did on the seal logs. I'll just take a, my skill saw and just cut along this line on the, the inside face and the outside, and then, then clean that up and run my planter down the top of it. In laying this out, I went ahead and made my mark down through here if it's just going to all be cut out like I would on a normal notch on the bottom side. That's just to kind of help me keep in my mind what I'm doing. When I laid this line here out, when I drew it, I went ahead and scored this with my utility knife so that when all this bulk of this wood is cut out, I'll have something clean to work to. My notch dimension was three and a half inches on these plate logs. And so I came down from the center line three and a half inches and then I came down another inch which made the total from the center line four and a half inches which will be the the actual cutout for the the keyway. I had this notch laid out on the outside of the log and I took my utility knife and scored the line like I did on the inside. Now I'm just going to take my chainsaw, my little saw, and I'm just going to make a series of cuts in here and I'm just going to drop, after I get up here close to the line, I'm just going to drop the saw straight down about, and I'll come down about half of the log, because I don't want to cut through into the, to the key that I've got on the other side that will lock the plate log on the, on the house. So I'm just going to just make these little cuts here, and then I'll just chop that out with a chisel, clean it up to this line here. And I'll leave a little bit of a shoulder here. If you can see, I've got an extra line here. That's about a quarter of an inch more than the thickness of the log that it'll go over. And I'll cut this all the way around real clean. That will give me just a little bit of slack there. So when I set this on the wall, I can still take my hand saw, my little silky, and make these saw passes here and bring the B and D logs into the shoulder here. Now I won't do anything as far as fitting these these notches on the wall because I've already made my adjustments got the the top of it's already ripped so when I set this up on the on the wall the only thing I'll have to do to it will be making maybe one or two handsaw passes right here on the shoulder to bring the the other log over to the shoulder got the plate logs ready to set on the wall. This is the 11th round, which is the last round. This is seawall. It'll be the heaviest log that uh, this new hoist has picked up. 
but I feel confident that it'll pick it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get the plate logs up and get them set on the wall and then I can measure an exact distance between them which is supposed to be 11 feet but that could vary just a, a tiny little bit before I cut the, the two half logs that will actually lock the top sides of the plate logs together. So here we go. Let's see if we can get it up there. <laughs> 